Hi and welcome to a new Unity video. This time we'll have a look at the Unity Spline Package and how to procedural create knots via C Sharp. Please note that this will very likely be the first part of a new tutorial series, so don't be surprised if the generation is simple. First of all, we need a clean Unity project. So launch the Unity Hub, click on New Project, select 3D URP Core, give your project a name, choose your organization, and don't forget to untick the Connect to Unity Cloud checkbox. Click Create Project and wait for Unity to load everything. I'm using Unity 2022.3.13. After the project is loaded, click on Window Package Manager and select the packages of the Unity registry. Look for the Splines package and click on Import in the upper left corner. When the import is finished, import the samples too. Make sure version 2.5.1 is imported. There is a Unity forum thread for the Splines package. The link is in the description box. The link for the package documentation is in the description box too. Feel free to check these links if you want to know more about the Splines package. The scripting API has definitely room for improvement as it doesn't show how to correctly procedural generate splines. The way shown here is absolutely not usable. So head back to the editor, and let's view how to create splines. Right-click into the hierarchy, select Splines and Draw Splines tool. This will create a new game object with a spline container component. A spline editor button is now available in the scene toolbar. The button down below is for placing spline knots with the mouse within the scene view. When dragging the mouse while the left mouse button is held down, it's possible to rotate the button. For every button created, the spline object and the knot list in the container will be updated. Let's create a few of the predefined splines, like the helix, star, or the circle, by right-clicking in the hierarchy, selecting spline, and the desired shape. Now it's time to start with our own spline creation. Create a new spline by right, clicking in the hierarchy and selecting Draw Splines tool. Just keep the default name and add the spline test script to the game object. We'll check out this custom script in a minute. Let me just show you how this works beforehand. The spline container reference is added automatically. The two vector three objects are for world position and rotation. The checkboxes are for adding knots or remove the last added knot from the list. So first of all, let's try to create a circle where the first knot position X is one. As you can see, the knot is added to the spline container and has manually set tangents. The number is a fixed value at the moment, but can be replaced with complex math in future. The next knot will be at X zero and Z one with a rotation of 270. We now generated a quarter circle with a very good approximation to a perfect circle. Adding the next knot at X minus one Z zero and a rotation of 180 degrees. And now adding the last knot at X0 and Z-1 with a rotation of 90 degrees. Clicking the closed checkbox of the spline will now result in a very good circle approximation. Let's check with a sphere. Change the scale to 2, and we see that our generated spline is basically a circle, generated by code. We can now try to change the spline via the inspector. Uh. 
after changing the position values, the spline can be fine-tuned for your needs. After jumping into the code, feel free to pause the video anytime. I just created serialized fields for the spline container and the vector three values for position and rotation. The Boolean values are just a replacement for UI interactions. Don't forget to add the execute and edit mode above the class. In the start method, get the reference to the spline container. And in the update method, we are R triggering actions via a Boolean flag. For instance, when removing the last knot of the spline's knot list. When looking at the spline container class, we see that there is an array of splines. The main spline field is obsolete and should not be used anymore. Adding a new knot works pretty similar. Important to know is that the knot's I enumerable is not a list, but the spline object itself offers all possibilities for modifying the knot collection, like adding and removing. When adding a new Bezier knot, make sure to have your desired values ready for the constructor and add it to the spline knot collection via the add method. The second parameter of the add method defines the tangent mode, which can be useful if you don't want to calculate the tangents yourself. Please note that this will result in cat mulram splines, just in case you need Bezier curves. As you can see, when removing the last knot and adding the auto smooth Bezier knot, the result will look pretty good, which is already sufficient for a lot of applications. When changing the mode to auto for all knots, the result will be completely different. You'll have to play around to adapt everything for your needs. Checking the spline factory class, we'll see that this class is used to generate all the preset splines in the hierarchy. If you're interested in the math behind, feel free to look into this class. The source code does have some insights, especially when dealing with the approximation of circles with Bezier curves. The Spline Common API shows a few examples using the Spline's package. This will be useful when creating Spline follower or handling Splines in more complex ways. If you liked the video, please tell me in the comments if you want this series to be continued. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.